Are you Dr. House? I understand you're a big fan. It's not abdominal epilepsy. I paged you to show you this. That's my son. He's dying, and not one of you seemed to have the slightest clue why. Something tells me that his father was a big fan of House up until precisely the moment he met him. Very excited to be reacting to House and D's Season 6, Episode 5, Instant Karma. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos, and this will be Episode 116. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Mr. Randall, they're here. 52 million includes over 6 million already issued pursuant to the over allotment option. When can we close? We're gonna have to wrap this up, I gotta go. You can't drag us all out of the office, get halfway through and then just kick us out. Yeah, I can. The antibiotic treatment had no effect. Both the fever and the pain are getting worse. We need to get him to a hospital. I don't wanna go. I want House. Your doctor House isn't available. Unless he's dead, comatose, or insane, I want him treating my son to death. The kid will still be Foreman's patient, but his dad wants you making the decision. You also need to prepare President Dabala's case for this week's morbidity and mortality conference. Abdominal pain, increasing in severity and frequency, fever, dehydration, diarrhea, weight loss. There are limits in this world, unless you're a conglomerate CEO. Clearly there have been quite a few great doctors who've seen this son so far and none of them have been able to figure out the cause of his symptoms. This means in true house fashion that all the common conditions should have been ruled out. So what else could cause a curious concoction of dehydration, diarrhea, fever, weight loss, and abdominal pain. Mediterranean fever could do it, but then his parents would have to be unwell too. We haven't met his mum yet, so I wonder if she has it. Whipple's disease could do it as well. If money is no limitation, then country borders likely aren't either. That means it wouldn't be unusual for them to have taken a tropical trip and brought back a not so sterile souvenir, Trophorima whipley. That's the bacteria that causes Whipple's disease. In all fairness, it could be amyloidosis as well. They'd probably want to recheck the investigations here as well, considering that the patient has been at home. There could potentially be a delay between the patient providing the sample and it getting processed, which could reduce the accuracy. I'd want to check stool for pathogens as well as over cysts and parasites and calprotectin, which is a marker of inflammation in the bowel. You know, I used to work with a gastroenterologist that discovered this calprotectin marker. His name is Jeremy Tibble, and he was telling me about how he used to take the stool samples home with him on the weekend when they were doing their research study. One day he forgot to take them out of his car and store them in the fridge on a rare hot summer's weekend in the UK. You can imagine the smell he was greeted with when he got back to his car two days later. He suffered so we wouldn't have to. Let's get more clues. 17 doctors. Everything's being ruled out, which means we have to re-rule out. We were in Montreal back in January. I went to see the NHL All-Star game for my birthday. Does that hurt more when I push there? Not really. He's constipated. Old one's clean, new one shows that his colon's almost completely impacted. Hirschsprungs? We need a barium enema and biopsy to confirm. I'm going to Thailand. Goodbye, house. Goodbye, 13. He's pain-free for the first time in months. He's even hungry. Right eye's fixed. Not a rectus palsy. He's seizing. He's got intracranial hypertension. Ferrosamide. 20 milligrams IV. We've got to relieve the pressure. His brain can herniate. The pressure in his skull is too high. We don't reduce it. It can irrevocably damage his brain. We Smiling. need to drill burr holes. Electrical seizure activity stuff. As a father myself, I can't think of many more terrifying requests than can we drill a hole in your child's head. Of course, if needs must, then go ahead. But if you damage any neurons, then please just make sure they're from their mom's side. Either way, we have some new clues, raised intracranial pressure and seizure. Toxoplasmosis or lymphoma could work, but to be fair, what would fit really well here is a very rare condition called eosinophilic gastroenteritis with brain involvement. It could actually be a result of food allergy, which means it'd be fairly simple to treat by emitting the offending food. But what even are eosinophils? Well, they're cells that are involved in both the innate and adaptive immune responses that can have these granules inside them. Those granules are filled with things called major basic protein and eosinophil cationic protein, which are toxic to many parasites. But when there's an allergic response, they can be inappropriately recruited, which leads to eosinophilic friendly fire with our own cells in the crosshair. The biopsy they took will definitely be helpful, so I'd be keen to see the results of that, as well as the stool tests and bloods, including the basic stuff like celiac disease. But first, we need to make sure he still has some brain function left to save. Question for you smart people. If you had a family member on life support and were told that they were pronounced brain dead, would you keep the machine on or be happy to switch it off? Answers down below. What happened? I have no idea. 
Don't usually see brain damage after a rectal biopsy. It's not just his brain. He's continuing to build up fluid in his abdominal cavity as well as the dura. The edge should be tapered, blend shape. Get a dural biopsy to confirm brain cancer. Wow, Bangkok. That sounds awesome. Luckily, I have a friend who's staying at my place. What, do you think I'm gonna rob the place? We just strain you like an ass. Nice way to live your life, bitch. That's impossible. I confirmed my reservation last night. Well, obviously, it was a mistake on your end, not mine. They didn't believe you, huh? luck just keeps getting worse, huh? Stay out of my life. Okay. I know you canceled my reservation. I, um, got the biopsy results. It's not cancer. How can so much be wrong with nothing being wrong? Adenocarcinoma of the stomach could cause pain, nutritional deficiencies that could cause seizures. Go scope him. There's a problem with the Dabala m, m The HDL numbers on one of his early blood panels don't match a later panel. So it's still cancer. It's just somewhere else. Well, it's my fault. I inherited a $10 million pipeline business when I was 24. By the time I was 30, it was worth over a billion. Everything I touch turns to gold, except my family. First my wife, and now my son. It's karma. It's seizing again. Get the scope out. This isn't intracranial pressure. And what the hell is it? Oh, I can see why the episode is called Instant Karma now. 13 being rude to the taxi driver, then having her flight canceled, our patient having been an aggressive businessman, and his son getting sick, and now Chase being dishonest about secretly killing a tyrant, and the cracks are starting to show. But for once, House isn't involved. What is happening in season six? Is he really reformed? I don't buy it, not for one second. What I can buy though, is if we don't figure out what's causing this boy's brain wiring to start crisscrossing more than a river dance, then this may just be the last dance. So what could this be? We know that he had fluid accumulating in his abdominal cavity as well as his brain, and the pain went away after he emptied his bowels. Constipation could have been a strained coincidence, which means the fluid must have come from somewhere else. It does fit quite well with an inflammatory condition, just in terms of the slow progressive nature of it and lack of response to antibiotics. In fact, antibiotics could have even triggered it since we know that gut bacteria have immunoregulatory effects and so wiping them all out may have the unhappy side effect of the immune system's extended no parent weekend. I want to suggest lupus on the differential, but as we all know, it's never lupus, so what else could it be? Familial Mediterranean fever, as we said before, could work pretty well if the mother was of Middle Eastern origin. We still don't really know much about her, but surely her death could be related to why her son is sick. Maybe if they crack her case, they'll find the answer to this one as well. I mean, Beches with brain involvement could do it as well. I'd really want an autoimmune screen. And also really important here, now they've established brain pressure isn't up, is we need some fluid from the spine. Also, they still haven't given us answers from the rectal biopsy, which I mean, probably would be quite realistic since they usually take a couple of weeks, but hopefully they give it before the case is done. I'd be pretty mad if I donated part of my colon to a lab and all they gave me in return was a stool pot and chronic epilepsy. Those would be my next procedures, so Let's get more clues. Seizures stopped, but he hasn't regained consciousness. And he's still accumulating subdural and peritoneal fluid. One of his stomach biopsies shows an arteriole partially occluded. Maybe the seizures aren't a new symptom, they're an old one. Abdominal epilepsy. The seizures would just look like pain until it spread to his motor cortex. Start him on gabapentin. Hook him up to an intracranial EEG for continuous monitoring. You really want Foreman to stay in charge of the team? Makes sense. He loves power. I love puzzles. Are you Dr. House? I understand you're a big fan. It's not abdominal epilepsy. I paged you to show you this. That's my son. He's dying, and not one of you seem to have the slightest clue why. Something tells me that this father was a big fan of House up until precisely the moment he met him. Very interesting case though, we've got a patient who's having seizures and now not waking up even after the seizures resolves. Stomach pain, fevers, fluid accumulation in the abdomen and brain, and now this new rash. In all fairness, the rash doesn't look like anything specifically identifiable. It's not a pinprick pruritic rash of vasculitis or meningitis, a small dot and spot rash like in measles. There are no bruising type elements or dryness of eczema. It's not target shaped like erythema multiforme or Lyme disease. There's no classic circle with central clearing like in ringworm, and there's no scale really for psoriasis. I'd definitely be calling a dermatologist for a closer look on this one with a dermatoscope and possibly a biopsy. Regardless of the funky rash though, I wonder if instant karma could be more of a play on what dictates the karmic force. The patient's father believes in this case it's some kind of spiritual curse, but what if it's much more tangible than that? Dad's trips to remote pipelines or war zones could have 
brought home a microscopic souvenir for our little one. They also said he visited Montreal for the NFL All-Star game. Maybe the trip took a detour through Mexico that they failed to mention. If work is such a priority, the dad could have wanted to kill two birds with one stone for efficiency. What infection could that be though that seemed to be undetectable on the preliminary tests? In all fairness, Whipple's disease, like I mentioned, would work really well here. It's exceptionally rare, less than one in a million, and can cause a full-blown systemic condition with weight loss, diarrhea, effusions, and seizures. Rectal biopsy wouldn't really be enough to figure it out, as it usually lives in the first part of the small intestine, and they need to use a special stain called periodic acid shift to be detected. If it fits so well, they could have got it on their travels, and it was true instant karma, as the son is a victim of his father's success. With new experiences come new pathogens. Whipple's disease has to be my first diagnostic guess. Let's get more clues. What about polyarteritis nodosa? Not my decision. But if it was, I'd say start him on prednisone and get a testicular biopsy. Is it on his penis? Kid's rash? Yeah, why? It's just most likely affecting the small blood vessels. It's to go disease. I'll do it. Causes micro blood vessels in the brain, skin, GI tract to break down, clot off. What's the treatment? There isn't one. It's incurable. We recheck the biopsies. It's definitely to go. How long? Day at the most. What's going on? You need to stop him. He's about to ruin his life. The billionaire thinks that the gods will treat him better if he's broke. You can't have all the good fortune in just one area of your life. Did you notice how House stopped the team treating polyarthritis nodosa because of the biopsy results? Well, the treatment they were about to give him was steroids. That's significant because Dago disease can be a horrible condition that usually kills within two to three years of onset because of the multiple blocked blood vessels throughout the body. But something tells me though, that his mother probably didn't present this way, and if she did, then they would know the diagnosis already because they would have done an autopsy. My spicy senses are tingling. I don't think it's to go. It's antiphospholipid syndrome. His immune system has gone into overdrive and started producing antibodies that get activated to our own cells. This leads an all systems go response and pro-inflammatory state that can increase the risks of microclots forming. It can also cause clots in the liver outflow tract called Bud Chiari that could lead to abdominal pain and buildup of fluid. It can cause seizure and fever of unknown origin and potentially could be missed if it wasn't tested for directly. Treatment would be with immunosuppressants and our boy would be able to live a normal, healthy billionaire life. Well, if the money's still there by the time he gets better. So antiphospholipid syndrome is getting my second diagnostic guess. Oh, that would be a ghost chili spice level turn of events here. Also very interested to see what happens with this Dybala m and It seems Chase will become the chaste if they find out he forged the test results. So let's find out. You shouldn't make a decision like this right now. Give it some time. My son doesn't have any time. He's not dying. It's not gonna happen, I'm not gonna let it. Deliver it or I'll make sure you end up the ones with nothing. Call a Cody splat mommy. Thanks for thinking I was worth breaking the law to keep around. Why? You're the only one he's never really been able to suck into his crazy house vortex. I told 13 I was the one who canceled the plane ticket. I know you didn't do it. She's making a mistake. So you did it for her. Why don't you just admit that you like having her around? Because I was born with a heart three sizes too small. Whoa, the heart three sizes too small has got the house hamster wheel turning. Dr. Blue Eyes' idea has clearly been given the green light. But how could a small heart be related to small blood vessels clotting off? Perfectly located between the brain is the heart. If said heart had a genetic mutation inherited from, say, a deceased mother, that could cause it to start scarring away its functional capacity. As a child grows and the cardiac demands increase, then his body can't keep up, leading to worsening symptoms. The condition, endomyocardial fibrosis. The team have also noticed that every time they've stressed the boy, his symptoms got worse and they triggered a seizure, which could have been a sign that his heart was struggling to keep up. It can also cause fluid buildup and gastrointestinal symptoms. For now, they need to thin the blood to stop further damage and potentially could replace his heart through a transplant. It seems the father's luck is starting to switch categories. See, we know for a fact that money can only increase happiness up until a certain point. If this were a real trade-off, which of course it isn't, I'm sure each of us would make it 100 times 
with no question. His actions, of course, seem irrational and probably change nothing here, but it still makes for brilliant TV. So endomyocardial fibrosis gets my third and final diagnostic guess. We are locked in. Question for you smart people. How much of your wealth would you be willing to give away to bring back a loved one if you had the chance? Answers down below. Breast was a coronary event. Coronaries are large vessels, means it can't be to go. It means it's primary antiphospholipid syndrome. You sure? Nope, but I will be if he responds to the heparin and immunoglobulin. Where'd you find it? Find what? One of Dabala's previous docs was prescribing ultra-high doses of niacin-bound chromium to boost his HDL. That gives us something to point to. You really didn't request the info? No. Which means? It worked. The medicine worked. It worked. How'd you find it? You knew he had to be taking something for his cholesterol. Better a murder than a misdiagnosis. Whether you want to be in charge or not, you are. And you always will be. Antiphospholipid syndrome! I got one and way before House, even before his epiphany. Okay, I haven't got one in about a whole season, but I'm almost definitely taking that. I'm surprised they didn't investigate what happened to the boy's mother a bit more, or how the heart being too small was remotely related to antiphospholipid syndrome, but either way, I will take it. Also interesting that House is looking out for his team, even when he's supposed to be watching from the sidelines. No matter how much of a jerk the team or the world thinks he is, is, there seems to be a desire for good still in there. Deep within. Great episode, 8.3 out of 10 entertainment, 7.8 out of 10 accuracy, 9 out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where the team treat a genocidal dictator flagship episode.